Yo, what's happening guys? Welcome to your third CSS tips and tricks tutorial. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a neat CSS only tooltip. So you probably know what a tooltip is, but just in case you don't, it's something like this, whereby we have an icon or some kind of text that when we hover over, gives us a little bubble of some kind with more information. Now you normally find these things on forms, which is why I've got this password field here. It's not just there randomly, uh, but you can generally have them anywhere where a user needs more information. In this case, we're going to be really specific about what kind of password the user needs. So I know you can get frameworks to do tooltips for you, but nine times out of 10, those frameworks are going to use JavaScript to accomplish this. I'm going to show you how to do this in CSS relatively simply. But before we start coding, I just want to point you to the direction of this repo right here on my GitHub, CSS Tips and Tricks. I'm going to leave the link down below so you can grab the course files for this tutorial on the third branch, CSS Only Tooltip. And in this folder right here, you're going to find the end files. So this is the end result. So you can download those if you want. Okay then, so as you can see, I've gone ahead and created this index.html file. It's dead simple. We've just got a head here with a title and a link to styles.css, which we're going to take a look at in a minute, it's right there. I've also got this really simple form with a label saying password, an input type of password, and then this span with a class of tooltip. So this is going to be our tooltip right here. So this at the minute looks like this on the screen. So we've got a password, the label, the input field, and then this little question mark, which is the span tag right here. So this is going to be our tooltip, and we're going to sort all this out in a minute. You're going to notice some base styles here. And that's these dudes that I've included right here. So I'll just run through these really quickly. Uh, background color on the body, font color, and the font family. Dead simple. The form, we're positioning relatively a width of 100%, max width of 600 pixels. Then we're saying we want a margin of 20% from the top and bottom and auto left and right, which is why it's central in the page. The form label, just some fonts, uh, styles. And then finally, the form input, we're giving it margin and padding, a font size, a border of zero and color of kind of like a deep gray. Okay, so that's why we get these default styles like so. Okay, then cool. So now we want to style up this dude right here, the tooltip itself. So let's go into this comment and you'll remember that it has a class of tooltip. So let's copy that and paste it over here. And what I want to do is just make this into like a round icon. So the first thing I'll say is position relative and the reason i'm saying position relative is because we're going to use pseudo classes later on which are going to be positioned absolutely and we want them positioned absolutely relative to this element okay so next i want to give it a slightly deeper background than this purple right here so i'll say background rgba and the a is the alpha channel so it's zero 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 that's black but then what we're going to do is say the opacity is 0 0.3 and the result is going to be that it gives us a darker shade of purple than this so if i save that now and just check it out you're going to see behind this that dark purple we can't see it much yet because it's got no padding so let's say padding five pixels top and bottom 10 pixels left and right border radius we're going to say 100 percent so that it's a full circle uh, the font size will increase to about 20 pixels and then finally I'm going to say cursor and give this a value of help and what this does is give the cursor that little question mark when you hover over it so if I save now check this out we have that circle when I hover over you get that little question mark underneath the cursor you might just be able to see that on your screen cool so that's that style now so now what we want to do is create the tooltip so that when you hover over it we see that tooltip now inside the tooltip there's some content where do we put that content well, what I'm going to do is use an attribute on this thing right here. So instead of creating extra markup, for example, doing another span with a class of tooltip text or something like that, and then only showing that when you hover over this dude, I want to just keep it all within this one element right here. So we're not adding any extra markup. So the way we're going to do this is by giving it a data attribute and the data attribute name is going to be tooltip. So it's data hyphen, not tooltip tooltip okay and then we're going to set this equal to whatever text that we want to show in the tooltip so i've already copied to my clipboard what i want to pop in here so i'm just going to paste it in so it's that thing right there passwords must contain three a's a seven and at least two question marks so we're being really peculiar about how we want our user to uh, create their password right here anyway that's the tooltip text 
and I'm going to show you a neat CSS trick in a few minutes um, as to how we can show this text on the screen. Okay, so we can grab this text and show it on the screen. I'll show you that in a few minutes. First of all, let's jump back to the styles and let's style up the pseudo classes of this thing right here. So we're going to use after and before. Now, this is not going to be a tutorial on pseudo classes. Uh, if you want to know more about those, I've got a CSS for beginners tutorial series. I'll leave the link down below. I talk about those in depth there. But basically, by using a pseudo class such as tooltip, double colon, and then after, I can target a position just after this question mark right here and style it. And by doing the same, but saying before, I can target just before the question mark and style that content. Okay, so it's really cool for kind of injecting extra content, if you like, onto the page. So we're not going to do it on this thing right here because that's the styles of the tooltip. But what I will do is come down here and say tooltip again. And then this time say before and then comma because we're going to also target the after. So we'll say tooltip double colon after. So we're targeting both of those things right there. And then we want to give these a few different base styles. Now, the first thing I want to do is give them a position attribute or a position property of absolute. So we're going to absolutely position both of these things. Now, what we're going to do is use this thing right here before to style that little triangle right there that's just above this question mark and below the tooltip. And then we're going to use this thing right here after to be the actual tooltip bubble with the text in it. So we're positioning both of them absolutely because we want them to be above this question mark and we want them to be in the center. So because we want them to be in the center, what I'm going to say is left 50%. And then they're going to start in that central zone right there. OK, so we'll leave that for now and come back to it later. But first of all, I want to style this thing that's going to be the triangle. So I'm going to copy that and paste it down here. Give ourselves a bit of room. And the first thing I want to do is say content is empty. Now we have to add this on to show this element, this before pseudo element on the page. Then we can style it. OK, so we've injected some empty content. Now we can style it. And I'm going to show you a trick here to create a little triangle in CSS. And it's to do with borders. So the way we do it is, first of all, give this a border width. So the border width at the top is 10 pixels, right 8 pixels, left 0 pixels, and uh, sorry, down zero pixels and left eight pixels. So we've got 10 pixels at the top, eight left and right, and zero at the bottom, right? This might seem a bit weird at first, but this is going to create a triangle for us. Then what I want to do is say border hyphen style is going to be solid. So it's a solid border. Then we want to give it a border color. So we'll say border color, and the top border is going to be RGBA. And it's going to be the same color as this thing right here, this little circle. So I'll say 0, 0, 0, and then 0 0.5 or 0 0.3, I think it was. So then, now that is just going to be the color of the top part of the border. We want the rest of them to be transparent, the right, bottom, and left. So we'll say transparent. Then we'll copy this because I cannot be bothered pasting it, or rather typing it another two times save that and then now you see we get this triangle so even though we've got a border left and right those borders are transparent the only border with color is this top one and that's this color right here so these borders right here kind of give us that triangular effect in conjunction with this border right here if you just search google for css triangles you will learn more about that but that's a nice little trick so we just want to position it a little better than it is at the minute. First of all, I want to bring it in to the left because it's gone slightly beyond halfway. So I'll say left or margin left. And I'll say about minus eight pixels. Save that and let's see what it does. Yep, goes roughly to the middle. Now I want to bring it up. So I'll say margin or fact, we'll just say top position is going to be minus 20 pixels. Save that and cool. So there is the triangle. That's fine. So now we've done that, we want to style the bubble itself. So I'm going to grab this tooltip after, which is going to be the bubble. Come down here and paste it in. All right, so the first thing I want to do is just give it some content again. This time I'll just say testing, testing, one, two, three. And that's just going to be our tooltip content for the time being until we inject the actual content. Okay, the next thing I want to do is give it a background again. 
of RGBA and it's 000, 000 0.3 again okay then I'll say top position again of minus 20 pixels to bring it up just like we did here and let's just see what's happening so far I'll save it and um, we can see it right there okay it doesn't look great yet but at least it's on the screen so the next thing I want to do is say font size is going to be 14 pixels because currently it's quite big so I'll save that and let's see what that looks like okay that's a bit better then I want to bring it to the left and also give it a wider width so I'll say width is going to be 300 pixels save that yep now we need to bring it over to the left so I'll bring it over by half of its width so that the middle is roughly there so I'll say margin left is minus 150 pixels save that and let's check it out okay that's cool so now we want to give it some padding we'll say padding is 14 pixels I also want to give it a border radius all the way around of about 10 pixels just to create that bubble kind of effect and then also I'm going to say color is EEE -E -E, which is a light gray so let's save that okay now we see that bubble it's looking better the only thing we need to do is shift it up even more so the top here is lined up with that triangle which is right because we said top minus 20 top minus 20 right but what we want to do is actually translate this so that the 100% of this width is moved up because we want this bottom edge to line up with this right and because we don't know the exact height in pixels what we can do instead is this we can say transform and I'm going to say translate y and y is the up and down coordinate so I want to translate it y up which is a minus so I'll say minus 100% which means minus 100% of its height okay so let's try that save it and see where it is on the screen that is looking better so that is where we want our tooltip to go all right so first of all let's inject the actual real content in this thing right here in the tooltip so instead of this testing testing one two three how do we get in the actual content this thing right here well we can do a really cool trick in css where we can grab an attribute from a html element we do that by saying attr then your bracket and then whatever attribute you want to grab ours is data attribute called tooltip so that is going to go out grab that content right here and it's going to output it in the content of this thing so if i save it now you're going to see it on the screen pretty awesome right okay so we've styled it up now what we want to do is make it so that it's invisible to begin with then when you hover over this we can see it pretty simple to do what i'm going to do is come to this thing right here which targets both the triangle and the bubble itself and I'll say opacity is zero. If we save that now, we're not going to see it. It's completely see-through. Then what I want to do is come to the bottom, add a little comment saying hover effects, and then within this, I want to target the same things. So I'm going to grab those, paste them down here, but this time we want it to be on hover of the tooltip. Make sense? So tooltip hover before and tooltip hover after so when we hover over the tooltip we want these to show so we'll set the opacity to be one again save that and if we hover over now now we can see it pretty cool but it's just kind of popping in and i think we can make this a little smoother make it fade in instead so let us go up to the top here and say transition set it to all which means whatever um, kind of property in the CSS that changes I want you to kind of animate every single little thing it's going to ease in or ease just in general and then I want the animation to perform over 0.3 seconds so if I save this now we can check it out in the browser and now it fades in and out looks a lot nicer and you can mess about with different properties and animating different things from one state to the next I've just done a passage here, but you can do different things like translations um, or spinning effects, whatever you want to do. But there we go. That is how you create a tooltip using only CSS. If you enjoy these videos, please, my friends, do not forget to share, subscribe and like them. And I'm going to see you in the very next tutorial.